Hello, I'm Greg Redke of Redke Mods, and welcome to episode 18 of season 3 of my Power PC series. Today's episode, we'll be doing something with the digital audio really neat. Um, we're going to be installing what's in this bag into here. But before we do that, this thing is going to update to Tiger, which it's doing right now. I forgot this thing was still running Panther. And I apologize if you hear any weird grinding noises or chainsaw saw sounds because the fan on the cooler on the CPU in this is dying. But that's not the whole point of the, uh, today's video. In fact, we're going to be fixing that fan by completely replacing it. Um, replacing the entire CPU, in fact. And that's where we get to this. In this, I just got this yesterday. Here we have an OWC Mercury Extreme. I'll pull up, bring it over to you guys so you can take a good look at it. The OWC Mercury Extreme G4. And I said G4. It looks like a dual, it isn't. It's actually a single. This is a single 1.467, I think that's right, on a 133 bus and a single 1.5 on a 100 bus. And um, you can also tell because it doesn't have a cash chip here or any resistors here. But this is on a dual card, which is a little odd. We're going to be taking this apart, cleaning it, getting it all set up to put into the system. And we'll also be comparing the CPU that's currently in the system, which is a Sonnet Single 1.2 G4. Um, I'm going to actually be fixing that G4 and the nasty, terrible fan in it that runs about half the speed it's supposed to because all the bearings are shot. Um, I'm going to be replacing the whole whole fan, maybe the whole cooler. I just bought a heat sink off of eBay. Uh, believe it or not, there's a seller selling them. And uh, he has a few in stock. I bought one. So I'll be replacing the fan on the G4. Then it won't be making that noise anymore. I'll have to figure out want to put the G4 into next. But this right here is going into the digital audio. And uh, at first I thought it was a dual when I bought it. Um, it wasn't until later when I was looking at it, I realized it was a single, but I still got it for a good price. It's going to be a very fun video. And in fact, I'm going to attempt to overclock it. The problem is the next multiplier speed pushes this thing up to about 1.6, which it probably won't even post with. Um, and I don't think there's any voltage regulators I can play around with. Uh, but we'll see, because you can actually control the clock speed with these jumpers right here by just turning them on and off, which will be fun. So we'll be comparing the speed of the one that's in this once Tiger installs, and we'll be comparing the stock speed of this, and we're going to try to overclock it and see if that works. Um, but yeah. And the other good thing about putting this system and this into the system is it's a full copper heat sink and it's designed for dual G4s. So if I do manage to get it to overclock, uh, it should run cool enough. Plus it's got two fans on it and the way digital audios are made, there's no airflow whatsoever. It's really bad. In fact, I've got the uh, factory uh, fan shroud and fan duct tape to the top of the sonnet. You'll see that it's a little comical. You, you actually saw it a few episodes ago on the Power PC series, but um, we're going to be showing it again. But yeah, it's um, it is definitely a um, it's going to be a fun video. I hope you guys enjoy it. And um, yeah, uh, I can't wait to show it to you. So. Uh, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. My dogs are making noises. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to let this install Tiger real quick. And then we'll continue on with the video. And I will see you guys soon. So let's go. It's alive! Okay, so my apologies again for the background noise but this thing's almost finished installing so uh, in fact it might start playing music in the middle of this which should be fun uh, but yeah we're going to be taking this heat sink off and cleaning this thing up and it looks like you just need to remove these four screws 
and void the warranty on it, which, um, well, yeah, there is no warranty left on it, so that shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to uh, do that. I don't see anything else holding it in. It should just pop. Yeah, there it goes. And that's interesting. They actually had thermal paste on the other one, too. And, ugh. yeah. This thing probably ran kind of hot because uh, it doesn't look like it really, uh, it's interesting. But I do like that they put this piece right here to keep it from grounding out. Although I don't think it would have ever touched it. Uh, it's just a little piece of rubber. In fact, Colin wants to actually uh, maybe put another G4 on here and see if he can get it to run, which would be neat. Uh, but currently it's just got one on it. We will clean this up and um, clean that up and et cetera, et cetera. So let's get to it. We don't need this little plastic gasket. It's just uh, to kind of protect the capacitors and it's just really nasty. Okay, so if we look at it, it's a 133, well, a 1,333 G4, which means um, this thing's basically maxed out as it is. It's overclocked already. Um, this should be a, a 1.42 um, to get those speeds stable, but I guess they, they found good uh, stock and had it running. So, yeah, but because of that, it's, uh, it's definitely probably not going to hit 1.6. We're going to try, though. Uh, it was made. When was it made? It appears to have been made... The fifth week of 2005, the chip itself. Um, the board itself was made September 15, 2006. So let's clean this up some. And I'll clean the heat sink up some. And we'll continue on. So, whatever they made this thermal paste out of does not come out the co copper heat sink very well. This is a pain to get off. But I did manage to get the main card cleaned up. It looks pretty good. So we'll uh, continue on with all this and uh, I'll try to get this thermal paste off. Okay, so I, I, I can't get it off. I, I have no clue why it won't come off. Uh, I'm getting it as clean as I can in the area where the die would touch. And I'll tackle it again in the future, especially when Colin try something with this so yeah anyway I'll put some thermal paste on this and we'll stick it back together go. Now I didn't totally clean the heat sink, but I'll uh, actually probably clean it soon. Uh, I just want to actually see if this thing works first. And Tiger is almost finished installing and updating as we can see right here. He is currently installing the combo update for 10.11.4. Uh, 10.4.11. So that's, it's about done. Then I got to put the benchmark software back on there. And um, We'll be all set up to uh, compare the 1.2 that's currently in it. As we can see right here. I don't know if you can actually see that. Well, it's got a 1.2 in it. I, I can't move the camera currently. It's at a weird angle. But yeah, it's got a 1.2 in it. We'll be uh, finishing the update on this and um, then comparing it. Well, while we wait for this to uh, update, 
and finish everything up. Uh, here's the heat sink. It's a solid chunk of copper here. Really nice looking, really filthy and a bit discolored, but uh, that comes with age. So, yeah, fans need cleaned, that needs cleaned. Um, I'm basically going to probably just blow it out for now. Um, I've gotten most of the top dust off. The lower dust needs a little work, but I'll get it out eventually. So, yeah, that's what the heat sink looks like. Well, it was almost finished updating, and the operating system froze up. And guess what, guys? The second hard drive I've lost this week. Um, love working with vintage hardware. Um, it could be a problem. I'm, I guess I'm going to have to pull a hard drive out of another Mac just so we can run these benchmarks. Uh, but it's not seeing this drive now, and it's just you hear it, the head seek across the disk and then go back. And that's it. You might hear it right now, in fact. It is literally not reading the disk. I have not touched anything. The hard drive died on me. Right when I finished t updating Tiger. So yeah, that's great. So how about that? As I went in to get the RAID Zero drives for my uh, blue and white sawtooth, um, it booted up. I don't think it's going to continue working. And I don't know if we should continue trying to work with it. I think the hard drive's failing. So, we're still going to put these drives in, but who knows? It just might be uh, the drive needs formatted again. We'll see, but for now, let's just use the uh, drives that already pulled out. Okay, so I can believe for a fact that the drive's probably going out because it appears to be the original IBM Desk Star which came with the system, and if I remember correctly, the desk stars had a bad problem with um, dying randomly. So, mm, this screw's really in here. So, um, I would say the hard drive's dying. So we're just going to pull this out. Oh, even better. Um, you're going to like this. It's literally just sitting in there. I've never touched this drive before. Um, but there's no screws in it. So if I just grab it. Oh, okay, uh, it's on the bottom. Interesting. Um, it's only got two of the screws, so maybe it's not the original drive. Um, but who knows? It's really loose in here. It's It rattles. So um, that probably helped kill it because it's been vibrating against metal for so long. So we're just going to um, set that there and put in the Maxter drives. These are two 120 gigs in RAID 0. In theory, it should close up. We'll see. Just, uh, and like the custom fan shroud held on with duct tape, it's awesome, isn't it? So, um, real quick, this fan, the original fan on this sonnet here, is, um, I talked about it being full of dust and stuff in the um, episode with overclocked um, uh, aftermarket, I mean, aftermarket cards and uh, showed how it was so dusty and stuff. It, it's shot, it's a bad, bad fan. So when it starts up, it sounds incredibly awful. And it runs at about half the speed it should. So the system will actually overheat unless the uh, case is shut. Um, but I have the original case fan in here also, which would have been powered by the uh, CPU originally um, on digital audios. So to power it, I uh, actually made a custom adapter and um, I didn't shrink tube it or anything because this was supposed to be temporary. It's now probably permanent, so I'm going to have to actually make it look nice. But it's plugged into a Molex connector, 12 volts. Uh, the fan runs at full speed. It works quite nicely. 
So yeah, I'm gonna close this up. We'll put it up and run some benchmarks. All right, we are booted up into Leopard and uh, we'll uh, set up the benchmarks. All right, so let's run Geekbench 2. I uh, don't believe I have anything running in the background, so everything should be good. So uh, let's give it a shot with the 1.2 and then we'll stick this in and see what happens. Um, so let's go for it. Uh, let's run Open Mark 2, that should be fun too. Okay, so here are the scores. It's got a 708. I should probably run the test a few more times, but I'm not going to because it gets to be a pain waiting seven minutes per run. Uh, so let's save this real quick. One, two. Desktop. Save. So we got that saved. Run an open mark test real quick. Or no, not open mark. Wrong test. X benchmark. So we'll do that. CPU thread and memory. So let's start it. And it is done. It got a 44.83. So we'll save that. Okay, so now we have all that saved. I'm going to take my dogs out real quick and then we'll come back and install and test this new OWC Mercury Extreme. So I'll see you guys then. Okay, so we're going to be taking the uh, Sonnet 1.2 out here. Just lifts up like that. The duct tape's a nice little hinge there. Yeah, cool. So yeah, this has got three screws in it. Those come out, it comes out. And then it should just pop right off, like that. There's the Sonnet 1.2 compared to the OWC Mercury Extreme here. And um, if you look at this and you think it looks familiar, they had similar designs from Giga Designs. In fact, I had one which I gave to Colin Mister, aka DOS Dude One, and. Um, it, it looks identical and has the same jumper settings, almost. It almost looks identical anyway. Uh, they may have been make, making them from the same factory, I don't know. But anyway, I'm gonna set this in here, put the screws in, and uh, we'll uh, power on for the first time and see if it powers up, so yeah. Let's see if it powers on the fans real quick and will give us a sign that it actually has life. So, power button in three, two, one. We have power and it bonged. So that's a good sign. Let's see if I can fit the uh, factory fan back on. Not really. It does not want to fit now. Uh, it has nothing to actually hold on to. So, see if I can get it to 
flip over that. It might actually work. Yeah. How about that? It does fit. I don't know if that's going to affect the cooling or not. If it starts overheating, I'll probably know that this fan's actually causing some airflow problems. But I think it will actually work that way. So we'll just close it up and uh, power it on and see what happens. Okay, let's see if it actually does what it needs to do. So let's hit the power button. I never did set the loop picker. Whoops. Let's try that again. Has problems seeing RAID 0 unless you preset it. Huh. It's not seeing any of the boot drives now. That could be an issue. Let's do a uh, pram reset. It's a uh, command shift PR, I think. Command shift PR? Okay, that's not it either. I don't remember how to reset the pram. Oh my God, how am I that stupid? Be right back. I was really wrong, it's option command PR. <laughs> Duh. Option command PR, it's a whole lot easier to do this on a key, uh, notebook. Yeah, it's a lot quieter now with this new CPU in it. I'm starting to think the hard drive's not going bad. The IDE controller's not working right. It could be an issue, considering all the benchmarks are on this drive setup now. So yeah, I'm going to troubleshoot the drives and I'll be back. Well, it is booting off a Tiger install disk right now and it took over two minutes for it to see the disk. I don't know if it's the IDE controllers not working with the CPU or if my RAID got corrupted. So we're going to find out and hopefully I can just get it to boot up after I select a boot disk in the installer disk. So we'll see what happens. Okay, we're in the tire install disk. Let's see what is going on here. Utilities. It is running really funny. It might be a RAM problem, come to think of it. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, it's not seeing the RAID drive controller. Uh-oh. I'm not really sure what's going on here. All right, I'm going to have to ch check all the connections and see what's going on. Um, and I'm going to pull out a RAM module stick because sometimes RAM can cause problems like that. So we'll, we'll see if that helps too. So, all right. Okay, so I figured out that the RAID drives for some reason just stopped working. I have no clue why, they seem to be fine but it will not see them. But for some odd reason, it's seeing the dying original hard drive. So we're going to go back to that and try to uh, put the benchmarks on that. And luckily I did happen to record the other one already, so it shouldn't be that big of an issue getting the results back because we can just go back in the video and look. So yeah, we're going to put the original drive back in and see what happens. All right, so I took the RAID drives out and they were really hot. And 
I'm wondering if there's some kind of hot air flow in that area and the drive's overheated. Don't know. That might be the reason why the other drive uh, died and started working again. Who knows? But we're going to boot it back up into the other operating system. And this is, we're, we're going to film it boot up to see if it actually still boots up. And uh, then I'll do the uh, downloads and stuff and we'll do the tests. So let's go. booted up really fast. That is very impressive. So let's get us scooted in here. All right. Out this Mac. 1.47 gigahertz, two megs of L3 cache, 1.5 gigs of RAM, it appears to work fine. As we can see right there, it's got all the nice high-end specs here. We're going to download the benchmarks real quick. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so I got everything downloaded on this drive here. And um, before we continue on with the benchmarks, I just want you to remember that the first benchmarks were ran on um, Leopard and now these benchmarks are going to be ran on Tiger. So there's going to be a difference. It's not going to be a huge difference, but there will be a difference in performance. So we're not going to get a full, um, perfect side-by-side -side result. And I apologize for that, but hey, at least this hard drive is running again, which I'm a little confused. It must be overheating, that's all I can figure. But anyway, let's get on to the benchmarks. All right, so we're running at 1.47, 1.5 gigs of RAM, and run. finished here. If I remember correctly, the first test for the 1.2 was 708. So that's 73, 72, 72 points higher. It's pretty darn impressive right there. And um, I've been testing this thing online, downloading all this stuff. It's like using a modern computer. It's quite impressive. We'll show you more about that in in a future episode, but we got 780 there. We'll save that. And if you notice, the benchmarks seem to actually run quicker in Tiger, which is also interesting. So we got that done. Now let's run XBench which I don't even see here. Where is it? Here it is. I haven't actually unzipped it yet. Xbench. We did Thread test, CPU test, and memory test. I think this got like a 44 point something with the 1.2, so let's see what it gets now. This thing is noticeably faster, and it's so much more quiet. Oh my God, that was quick. 52.52, not bad. So yeah, that's a heck of an improvement. So now I think it's time for us to attempt to overclock it and if it doesn't work, oh well. Um, this is still really fast and I'm actually quite happy with it. So let's save this. 
so I don't think it's going to work, but let's see if it does or not. Okay, I'm going to attempt to overclock this. I don't know if it's going to work. I highly doubt it will. But I've looked up the jumper settings. I just need to move one jumper switch, which will be this one right here. And it's overclocked to almost 1.6 now, which I have a feeling it won't do. But we're going to find out. And uh, honestly, let's just see if it posts first before I put that back on. So let's turn it on. It posted. Okay, so that might be a good sign. We'll see if it will boot up. And we'll also see if uh, my theory is correct that this is the way it's supposed to be overclocked to that setting. So I'll put this back on and we'll go back to where we were with um, booting. Okay, let's see if it posts again. I have a feeling it won't boot, but we'll see. It posted. Yeah, it's not doing it. If I could actually modify the voltage on the card some, I think it would actually post. And I, it might actually be stable because it posting and trying to start booting up is actually a very good sign, believe it or not. So it crashing like this just means it's not stable enough to boot but it's stable enough to start booting, which is impressive. So I'm going to set this back to the way it was, um, and then we'll wrap up the video. Okay, we are back booted up from uh, unoverclocking it. And if we go back to about this Mac, it should be back where it was. Yeah, 1.47. So yeah, we're, we're back to the way we were. The system's working fine. It's working really quick. Even with this old Dex Destar hard drive, it is flying. It's quite impressive. Everything seems to be working fine. We've got all the RAM and everything. And I'm quite happy with the end result with this. Um, I am going to try to figure out the jumper some. I'd like to try to overclock it some and uh, at least modify the voltage. If anything, this card is the perfect candidate for um, a 7457 G4 swap, which luckily I happen to have a number of those sitting at Colin Mister's house because I bought a buttload of them online when we came across some. So those are the revised version of the 7455s, which are on this. And uh, the 57s are like the uh, 47s that were in the uh, last power books, only they support L3 cache. So they, they're, they're a lot better. And um, I think we could make the world's fastest digital audio um, with uh, just a, a little bit of uh, work there, um, which would be pretty neat. Although I do want to actually reserve those to make the world's fastest MDD. The world's fastest digital audio would be pretty neat too. And if we cross, happen to cross some more, that would even be more incentive to do it. They're hard to find. They're really expensive. And we found them really cheap. Um, the guy didn't know what he had. So it, it might be a good candidate for it. We'll see. But anyway, so yeah, that's, that basically wraps it up for today. Um, I'll have to figure out the cooling problem with this that's um, trying to kill the hard drives. But the system's running fine on the old hard drive again with no problem and it boots up extremely fast. So I think it was just overheating. Um, I'll uh, have to test my uh, sawtooth blue and white and um, 
make sure those drives weren't fried in this thing. I don't think they were, but we'll see. But anyway, guys, that's the end of today's video. Don't forget, I am now sponsored by SellYourMac.com. If you'd like to sell an Apple product, uh, just go to SellYourMac.com slash mods and sell something. It will help me out, and it will help you out because you'll be making money. Also, don't forget, I do now have a Patreon if you'd like to help support me and see these videos one day early. Um, definitely go over there and check it out. Uh, help support me. You don't have to. Of course, this channel's free, but I do would definitely appreciate it and it would help with the channel a lot so yeah anyway so yeah once again thank you guys for watching and this has been a rutkin mods video